Welcome to Louisville in Kentucky in the US. This is day two of our tour. Day one didn't disappoint. That's mainly because Mike went ahead the week beforehand to get some incredible recommendations from the community. The lesson that we wanted to teach the other guys was that you shouldn't just Google things to do in a city and go and do those things. We've got a ton of amazing stuff lined up and it starts with a local delicacy. The reason we were up at the crack of dawn was that Kern's Kitchen, the name of the inventors of the famous Derby Pie, were making pies that morning and invited us to see the production process and eat some. Cheers. Cheers. But first, let's talk about Derby Pie. Named after the famous Kentucky Derby horse race, by pulling the name out of the hat, this is a sticky sweet chocolate and walnut pie with a recipe so secret only the head chef knows it and makes it behind a curtain. That recipe is five decades old and served in hotels, restaurants, and homes across all of Kentucky. And it was good. Look, a prong of fork has pierced a pocket of warm chocolate. Is it frowned upon not to use a fork? Oh, that's a good pie. It's so rich, but then the, the walnut has kind of a, nuts have almost like a bitterness to them with mm. the richness of chocolate. Obviously, a lot of sugar going on there and it's, Oh, so good. This is the Ohio River, which runs alongside the north part of Louisville. It forms a state line separating Kentucky and Indiana, and it's also great for activities like stand-up paddleboard yoga. Yes, you heard that right. Barry forgot his swim shorts, so we sourced an alternative. What the? <laughs> They're massive! Looking good. Why are you wearing matching shorts? We go shopping so together. <laughs> That is Mimi, our instructor, the most patient person in the world. <laughs> you okay, mate? <laughs> oh! Jamie stole the show, though. <laughs> yes, <I'm out. laughs> <laughs> and that was us done. With our zen fully topped up, we split up to cover the next part of our itinerary. For Ben and I, that meant high five donuts in the trendy industrial butcher town neighborhood. High five donuts, a uh, cool place, started as a tent, became a food truck, now they've got a shop, they make everything from scratch. And this is Vietnamese coffee donut washed down with cold brew. Coffee's always good, but I remember the coffee in Vietnam as being really strong, and then with that really sweet condensed milk. And here, the fried dough that's chewy and fluffy at the same time. Oh yeah, I got a really strong taste of coffee. It tears and it chews. I say it's a cross between like the fluffiness of brioche and the chew of pretzel bread. Best donut I've ever had, easily. So we've split off from Mike and Ben, and Mike's told us to come here to the Stevens and Stevens Deli to have Benedictine. Any idea what that is? No. Benedictine is a spread made with cucumbers and cream cheese, and it was invented by Jenny Carter Benedict from Louisville in the early 20th century, and is a Louisville staple. Oh. Oh. Mm. This is where you realize that Mike got some pretty good recommendations, because this, this is an iconic Louisville recipe that the rest of the world hasn't caught on to yet. And it's a good sandwich. It has a lot of cream cheese. With the bacon, it kind of evens out the fat. Does that make sense? Oh mate, your beard. There's a whole tub of cream cheese in this sandwich. It's not gonna not go in my beard. Next stop on Mike's magical mystery tour of Louisville for me and Barry, he's asked us to come here to the Seal Bark Hotel. Now this, as well as being one of the grandest hotels in the whole city, is actually where Al Capone, Lucky Luciano, and a load of gangsters during the Prohibition era would come here to drink, gamble, plot, uh, and they've even got secret passageways underneath the hotel to evade the cops. Mike's told us we have to get the Seal Bark cocktail, or drink that, and then we'll go meet them somewhere else. Not only that, but I was told the hotel was where F. Scott Fitzgerald was inspired to write his novel, The Great Gatsby. The character Gatsby was even based on one of the gangsters Fitzgerald met whilst visiting. 
Meanwhile, Ebbers and I met Andrew from Chef Space. It was here that we learned that Louisville has the highest number of independent restaurants per capita in the US, second only to New Orleans. That's why the food is so good here. Kentucky is well known for horses and here in Louisville in 2015, there was the third installment of Gallapalooza Art Exhibition. That's 50 life-size horse statues dotted around the city and there's a map. Welcome to Horse Art Hunters. <laughs> horse art. 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 Stop. Stop. <laughs> Training. The things we do for horse art. There she is. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. I need to get in. Sneaky car park horse art. <laughs> 20% of horse art hunting in Louisville done. Can you do better? Right, we've kicked Mike off the voiceover to tell you about this bit. In the last episode, Mike tried to teach us a lesson because apparently we didn't do enough due diligence on some of our restaurant research. And our punishment was to watch everyone else eat our food at our restaurant choices. It was torture. So, as we're in Kentucky and Mike loves fried chicken more than anything else, we thought we'd get some revenge. <laughs> Shut up, Jamie. I'm done. I don't mind. This is not a problem. The sweet oh. in, the pickle, the marination, and the bite, and the crunch of that fried chicken, the soft, pillowy bun. No. <laughs> I have not had a better fried chicken sandwich than that. They literally ordered everything I love. Look at that! That's the best. When life. you break into it and it steams, but you've got that golden crisp on the outside, that gets a wow and two thumbs up. Are you zoomed out? Mate? I'm as far out as I can, aren't I? Come be closer. Oh no! <laughs> I was going the wrong way. I film things now. <laughs> Mike, you've done an amazing job at organising all of this. Thank you. I can actually eat this. I didn't say that. You know I love a format, I don't think it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I had some pent up frustration to release, so throwing sharpened steel implements at painted wooden targets seemed a fitting remedy. And it also happened to be next on our list. Sorry. Oh. Don't worry, at least Barry didn't do well. No. If there was one sport that Jamie's made for, it's that story. There it goes. <laughs> it's safe to say Ebbers hasn't found his calling. <laughs> what? 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 I'm going to stick to horse art hunting. <laughs> Our final destination on our local tour guide of Louisville was a restaurant so frequently recommended we had to finish up at Milkwood. Described as southern inspiration plus Asian flavours plus bourbon cocktails. This was a local recommendation and this is what I think of the restaurant. Nice. Thanks Jay. It's hidden under a theatre. You wouldn't know it was here and therefore it feels a bit like a, a hidden gem and that we've stumbled on something a little bit special. I ordered the pork shoulder and um, the more you work towards the middle, the more you get the texture and the flavour. And by the time you get to the end, you realise what an amazing pulled pork shoulder it is. And it's absolutely doused in a glaze, which is really sweet. The first mouth, you're like, that's pretty good pork shoulder. And then it keeps going. It keeps that's amazing, isn't it? Bulgogi beef tartare with smoked coconut on top. And I think I can honestly say I've never tasted anything like that in my life. It is so unusual. I reckon I probably had some preconceptions about Louisville that were based solely on bourbon. And I had no idea that there was such an independent food scene and a real community of people who love food and are doing amazing things with food. Louisville had so much going on for it. It had the beautiful greenery and waterside. Not gonna lie, a whole bunch of ideas that I'm already jotting down and trying to steal, including trying to hack the recipe for Derby Pie. 48 hours in Louisville is a phenomenal whistle-stop tour. We have experienced so much and it's not over yet. We're now heading to Iowa. <laughs>